Father, we thank you. We hand over your word to you, O oh God. We ask that you will preach your word by your spirit. You will teach us, Lord, and you will confirm your word with evidence. Mm -hmm. You will pour out your spirit upon every flesh today, mm -hmm. and you will empower us by your spirit mm -hmm. to do your will. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Mm -hmm. Brothers and sisters, one more time, you are welcome. You are welcome. Our theme has been growing in the spirit, and today is impartation. Growing in the spirit, impartation. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Growing in the spirit, impartation. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 13 is our text for growing in the spirit till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. And very simply and clearly, growing in the spirit is to grow to the fullness of Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. Is to grow to the fullness of Christ, Jesus, the Son of God. This has always been God's desire. This has always been God's plan that we will be sons and daughters of God. When God created Adam and Eve, the Bible records that God will fellowship with them. They will fellowship with God. The spirit of God was in them, was upon them, and they had access to God. But after the fall of man, Man lost that connection. Man sinned. And the spirit of God cannot dwell in sin. And there was that separation. But God has always wanted to restore mankind. Praise the name of the Lord. And so God started by choosing prophets. After calling Abraham out, God continued to reveal himself to men. And what was God doing? He would give his Holy Spirit temporarily. The Spirit will come upon them. They will prophesy. They will do great things and all that. God will raise vessels, raise my people. And you have seen the prophets, great prophets that are recorded in the Bible. That's how God was working with man. And then culminated in the man called Moses, whom God raised to raise up a race as example of his servants. You know, the Bible called Moses a servant in the house of God. Hallelujah. We saw how God demonstrated this desire from time to pour his spirit upon all flesh in Numbers chapter 11 that we looked at last uh, Sunday. Numbers chapter 11, if you read 11 all the way to 29, you will see. So God put his spirit upon Moses and God demonstrated that his desire is to put his spirit upon man because it is only by the spirit of God that we can indeed do the will of God. But the spirit of God was not permanent in man. It was only selected people. Like Moses said, they say, I wish all the people of God were prophets, were few, but the spirit of God and they were prophets unto God. Praise the name of the Lord. That's Numbers 11, if you look at verses 28 and 29, that about. But God had a grand plan, hallelujah. At the fullness of time, God gave his son, Jesus Christ, to come and die for the sins of man, address the issue of sin. And once the issue of sin was addressed, the redemption was uh, fulfilled by the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. Then man was ready for God to return his spirit into man fully, no more temporarily as it used to be in the people of old prior to Jesus coming. Hallelujah. And that sets the context of what we mean by growing in the spirit. It is receiving the spirit power and growing thereby to fulfill all of God's will and purpose 
for your life. It is not optional to grow in the spirit. You need the spirit of God to do the will of God. You need the power of God to do the will of God. Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6 says, It is not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Prophet Jewel prophesied much earlier. Let's read some scriptures now. Jewel, let's go to Jewel chapter 2 to then reconfirm that context that I have set. And then we run through and then minister to ourselves. Hallelujah. Because Jesus said, wherever two or three are gathered in my name, I am. So Jesus is here and he will manifest himself to us in Jesus' name. So let's go to Joel chapter 2. Let's start reading the scripture from there. Praise the name of the Lord. Verses 28 and 29. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. 29. And also on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. Now go with me immediately to Acts, Acts chapter 2 and see the fulfillment of this word through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In Acts chapter 2, let's start from verse 1. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. That's why we're playing that song. And I hope you love to sing that song, like the rushing of a mighty wind, like the rushing of a mighty wind, come and fill our lives again, like the rushing of a mighty wind, like the rivers that overflow. Let's continue the reading. I repeat verse two. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Verse 3, then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them. Four, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And they were dwelling in Jerusalem, Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And when this sound occurred, the multitudes came together and were confused. They were confused. People will be confused with your life when the Holy Spirit begins to drive your life. When the power of God, as Jesus promised, as we're going to look at, because what we are reading here was what Jesus promised. And said, this is the promise of the Father. This is God's promise, as you also saw in the book of Jewel. So we're reading here to confirm the fulfillment of God's promise, which Jesus, the Son of God, also confirmed. So they were confused. Don't worry about who is confused about your life, because your life is driven by the power of the Holy Spirit. What you need is the power of the Holy Spirit. You need the Spirit grace. You need the Spirit anointing, the Spirit power. And He is available to you now in the name of Jesus. They were confused because everyone heard them speak in his own language. Seven, and they were amazed and all marveled, saying to one another, Look, are not all these who speak Galileans? Yet by the Spirit of God, they were enabled. The wonders of God was performed. Praise the name of the Lord. Jump with me to 12. So they were all amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, Whatever could this mean? What does this mean? And you will hear the meaning now. From verse 14, but Peter standing up with the 11, raised his voice and said to them, men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and heed my words. For these are not drunk as you suppose. This, are, this should not be a confusion as you see. This life has been empowered by the spirit of God, hallelujah. Men and women who are connected here have received a fresh fire of God upon their lives. It says, since it is only the third hour of the day, 16, it said, but this is what was spoken by the prophet Jewel. 
Say prophecy has been fulfilled. Say that prophecy has been fulfilled. It has been fulfilled. And once it has been fulfilled, it is established. And it is mine. It is yours. So Peter standing up with the 11, speaking in the Holy Spirit of God that has come upon them, said in verse 16, but this is what was spoken by the prophet Jewel, and it shall come to pass, verse 17, and it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. And on my men servants and on my men servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they shall prophesy. This was the prophecy fulfilled according to God's promise and as spoken by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Since we are in Acts, let me, Acts chapter two, let's just complete this and then go to hear what Jesus said his promise will do. Hallelujah. If you jump with me to uh, the same Acts chapter 2, let's look at from verse 36. As Peter continued to speak, we came to verse, come to verse 36. He said, therefore, let all the house of Israel know as surely that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, good Lord and Christ. This Jesus, whom you crucified, God has made him, good Lord and Christ. Christ, he is the Lord, the Savior of all humankind. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He is not just the way and the truth, because some people will be talking about the way. Some people will be talking about the truth. Way and truth stop at organization. But how about the life? It is only by the spirit that life is given. It is only by the spirit that life is given. But Jesus is the way. He is the truth. And the life in the name of Jesus. In fact, at that point, let me pause. That is why Paul in First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 4. He said, I did not come to you with the enticing words of man's wisdom, but I came to you with the demonstration of the spirit and power. Of the spirit and power. There must be life in the way and in the truth. If somebody claims that it is a way. And he claims that it is a truth. There must be a demonstration of the lie that that way and that truth brings. Because that's what makes it complete. That is why Jesus is the only way. That is the only one. That is the way, the truth, and the lie. And this Holy Spirit brings this life of God alive in us and drives us to fulfill the purpose and the will of God for our life. It is mandatory that you get baptized in this Holy Spirit. It is mandatory that you get driven, led by the power of the Spirit. And here we are this moment. The power of the Spirit is available to you, is available to me, is available to everyone. In the mighty name of Jesus. Just to add to that, in the same First Corinthians, Chapter 4, verse 20. Please note these two scriptures so you will be reading them for yourself. I just quoted 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 20. Paul said, the kingdom of God is not in words. It's not in theory. It's not in talk. It's not in philosophy or psychology. It's not in manipulating with enticing words. Look at it with me. First Corinthians chapter 4, verse 20. For the apostle, or the man that had the revelation of Jesus Christ, the mysteries of God and of his Christ was revealed to him. First Corinthians chapter 4, verse 20. He said, for the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power but in life, but in demonstration, but in manifestation. That's why, why today you must be baptized in the Holy Ghost, in the Holy Spirit and power. That same spirit that was in Jesus Christ when he was here on earth and he was doing the will of the Father, that same spirit will move you to do the will of God 
to fulfill all of God's purpose for your life. But this is what it means to grow in the spirit to the fullness of the measure of Christ, the son of the living God. So Peter continued as we were reading in Acts chapter 2. I repeat verse, verse 36 down to 39. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. 37. Now, when they heard this, they were put to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? What shall we do? Wherever you are hearing this word, maybe you are saying, how do I receive this life? Pay attention. They said to Peter, men and brethren, what shall we do? Jesus has already said what we shall do. And here Peter answered, because he heard what Jesus said, we shall do. Hear him in verse 38. Then Peter said to them, repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. I want to read that again. Acts chapter 2, verse 38. This is it. What shall we do? Peter answered. Then Peter said to them, repent, repent of your sins. And let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Read 39 with me. For the promise is to you and to your children and to all who are afar off, as many as the Lord our God will call. That's why I always ask you to pray for the elect of God. All those whom our Lord, the Lord our God, will call. Let the Spirit draw them into their Master and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let the Spirit of God draw all to hear this word of life. Jesus Christ has saved yesterday, today, and forever. He has not changed. Through him, the Son of God, God has given us eternal life. And this is the promise. So Peter said here in verse 39, for the promise is to who? To you, to me, to our children, and to all who are afar off, as many as the Lord our God will call. Have you heard this word? The Bible says, when you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Harden not your heart. Yield by the Spirit to God through his Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's go to Acts chapter 1 and see what Jesus promised that has been fulfilled here. We've seen God promised it through the prophet Joel in Joel chapter 2, verses 28 and 29. And Jesus came, finished the work, and also spoke this word that has been fulfilled as we've seen in Acts chapter 2. It belongs to all of us. Amen. So Acts chapter 1, let's start reading from verse 4. And being assembled together as we are assembling here. Hallelujah. Because Jesus said, wherever two or three are gathered in my name, I am in their midst. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me, the promise of the Father. The same thing Peter repeated in Acts chapter 2, verse 39, for the promise, it is a promise. God promised Joel prophesied, he said, in the latter days, in the last days, my spirit, God said, will come and be upon all flesh. Does all flesh include you? So anyone who comes through Jesus Christ, the son of God, the way, the truth, and the lie, the spirit will come upon you, just like Peter said. So let's read on. I'm being a Assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. Five, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Six, therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? They were more concerned about the things of the earth. 
But hear what Jesus answered in verse 7. And he said to them, it is not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority. But you shall receive power. Verse 8, let's look at it again. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And this is the promise. And so we saw in Acts chapter 2 that this promise was fulfilled. From that day, the Holy Spirit has been here with us. Glory be to God. I say from that day, the Holy Spirit has been here with us. Because Jesus Christ had told us earlier, he said, if I go, I will send the Spirit. Verse 13 of John chapter 16, look at it with me. Verse 13, John chapter 16, verse 13. He said, however, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak of his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. 15 says, all things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, I say that he will take of mine and declare it to you. You need the Holy Spirit. If you look from verse 5 of that John 16, he said, but now I go away to him who sent me. And none of you ask me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Seven, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is. It's to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper, the Holy Spirit will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. So in Acts chapter 2, the Holy Spirit came. And from that day, he is here with us. He is here with us. Right now, the Holy Spirit is here with us. God promised it. Jesus fulfilled it, and he is here with us. He came down, and he is here. Are you ready to be baptized, immersed, soaked by the power of God? As Jesus said, it is this power that will help you to fulfill all of God's will and purpose for your life. God has a will for you. God has a purpose for you. Even as we saw in that Ephesians chapter 4, he said he has made some apostles, prophet, evangelists. Whatever is your own calling, it is by the Spirit of God. Are you ready for the baptism of the Holy Spirit? The Bible says repent. That's it. Repent. So anywhere you are, it is time. It is time for the ministration. Hallelujah. Repent. Peter said, repent. That's how. Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus. In the household of Cornelius, in verse uh, Acts chapter 10, Acts chapter 10, let's just look at verse 44. The Bible says, while Peter was still speaking the, these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon all those who heard the word. And those of the circumcision who believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles also. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then Peter answered, Can anyone forbid water that this should not be baptized who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? So I want to make the point there because some people will say, Oh, that scripture there says, Repent and be baptized. That, oh, no, you have to be baptized before you receive the Holy Spirit. No, the Holy Spirit came upon the household of Cornelius here, who were even Gentiles before they were baptized. So the Holy Spirit comes upon anyone who repents and accepts Jesus Christ. Are you there with me? Lift up your voices wherever you are and say, Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I repent of my sins. Forgive me, Almighty God, all my sins, all my iniquities, all my transgressions, all my errors and mistakes. I repent, Almighty God. I accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Let the blood of Jesus wash me now. Let the blood of Jesus make me clean. Let the blood of Jesus make me whole. I give my heart to you, almighty God. I give my body, soul, and spirit to you, Father. I say you are my God. Lord Jesus, take over my life now. Take over my life. I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that you are my Lord. You are my Savior. You are the Son of God that has died for me to rose from the dead, to ascend to heaven, to sit at the right hand of the Father, interceding for me. And you have promised that when you go, you will pray the Father. He will send the Holy Spirit. And you have prayed the Father. The Father has sent the Holy Spirit.
repent. Repent and ask God for the Holy Spirit. Just like Peter said in that Acts chapter 2. Repent. And he said the promise is for you. It's for your children. Repent. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ. For the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is to you. The promise is to you. The promise is yours. The promise is yours. The promise is ours. The promise is God's promise. It's God that promised it. It is God that promised it. And he has fulfilled it. Through his son, Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit came. The Holy Spirit came. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Go with me to Acts chapter 2. I want to pray from there. Acts chapter 1, rather. So Jesus said, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you, you shall be witnesses to me. You shall manifest me. You preach me. You leave me. You see, there is no separate you when you have received the Spirit of God. There is no time that you are in church and you are out of church. That is why I take time to teach people the meaning of the body of Christ. The body of Christ is spiritual. Yes, the physical gathering is important, is necessary. Whatever group you belong to, as long as they recognize that a physical gathering is not the church. The church of Jesus Christ is you and I who have become part and parcel of the body of Christ. The church of God is the body of Christ. And Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell cannot prevail against it. Now, the power of the Holy Spirit is given to us. And by that spirit, we become sons and daughters of God, like Jesus Christ, the Son of God, to manifest while we are here in this world, in the totality of our being, just like Christ. Of course, that is the meaning of Christian. Hallelujah. Shout glory be to God. Just like Christ. And so what are you going to do? After this moment, you're going to pack the synoptic gospels and read from the book of Matthew and then read through the whole of Acts and see what Jesus did as a son of God, walking in the power of the Holy Spirit here on earth. Oh, I'm quickened to read Acts chapter 10, verse 38. Acts 10, 38, hear what happened. He said, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil for God was with him. Open the and say, God is with me. Through his son, Jesus Christ. Emmanuel, God with us. God is with me. God is living in me. Jesus is living in me. The Holy Spirit is living in me. I have God in me. In the mighty name of Jesus. After this moment, you will no longer be shy to tell people, I have God. Look at what Peter said in that Acts chapter 3. From verse 6, he said, then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have. But what I do have, I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Peter knew he had something. Peter knew he had something. You gotta know you have something. I gotta know I have something. We have something. And it, it is called the Holy Spirit of God. Look at John chapter 14, verse 23, before we again cry to him. John chapter 14, verse 23. So you know you have something. Jesus answered and said to him, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word and my father will love him. And we will come to him and make our home with him. We will make our home. The father, Jesus Christ, is the son of the living God. And the Holy Spirit, we will come and make our home where? In me, in you. Peter said, what I have 
He knew he had something. After the encounter in Acts chapter 2, he knew he had something. Now it was time to show forth what he has. You have to be ready to manifest as a son of God, as a daughter of God. And so it's time. Raise your voice now to heaven, according to Acts chapter 2, that what Jesus said. He said, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Raise your hand to heaven. I say, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, according to the fulfillment of your promise, pour out your spirit upon me now. Pour out your spirit upon me now. In the name of Jesus, pour out your spirit upon me now. According to your promise that has been fulfilled, it is no more a promise, it is now my right. It is now my right. Jesus Christ has fulfilled it. It has been fulfilled in Acts chapter 2. Peter received, the Paul received. God, pour out your spirit upon me now. Pour out your spirit upon us. Every one of us connected, call him now. Lord, pour out your spirit. Pour out your Holy Spirit. Pour out your Holy Spirit. Your spirit upon me now. Your spirit now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I release myself to you. Pour out your spirit upon me. Pour out your spirit upon me. Pour out your spirit upon me. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Where can I say? In the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit of God, I open my heart to you. I release my body, my soul, my spirit, all that I am to you now. I say, fill me with your power. Fill me with your power. Let the power of God, the power to witness Jesus, fill me now and manifest in me in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and pray that prayer. Go ahead and pray that prayer. The power of God is coming upon you right now. There will be a manifestation right now. There will be a confirmation right now. As it happened in Acts chapter 2, it is coming upon you now. It is coming upon you. The Holy Ghost power is falling upon you. The fire of God is coming upon you. The fire of God is burning in you right now. In the name of Jesus, I release myself to you. Holy Spirit of God, I release my body, my soul, my spirit, my all I release to you now. Holy Ghost, burn in me. Holy Ghost, burn in me. Let your fire burn in me. Let your power burn in me. Let the gift manifest in me. And the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. We're going to join our voices now and pray for one another. Because as you saw in Acts chapter 2, they were in one accord. Hallelujah. They were in one accord, praying. And so we're going to raise our voices and say, Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, pour your spirit upon us now. Holy Spirit of God, in the name of Jesus, we release ourselves to you. We say our bodies are your temple. According to the word of God, according to the will of God, according to the plan of God, in the name of Jesus, fill this body now, fill this temple now, fill this house now, manifest your power in every one of us that are connected now upon this platform and whosoever will hear this word, We'll watch this video. Let the Holy Spirit fall on us. Let the Holy Spirit fire burn in us. Let the power of God manifest in us and manifest in them. In the mighty name of Jesus, go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. It is a day of impartation. It is a day of endowment with power. The power of God is upon you. The Spirit of God is upon you. The grace of God is upon you. God has sent his gift to you. God has sent his spirit to me. The spirit of the 
in me here. The Holy Spirit is here. In the name of Jesus, it has been fulfilled. It is no longer a promise. It is no longer a promise. It has been fulfilled for you. It has been fulfilled for me. The Holy Spirit has been given. Jesus said, when I go, I will send him. The Father will send him. And my Father and I will come. And we will make our home in you. The Holy Ghost came. On the day that we still call the day of Pentecost. In the scripture, in Acts chapter 2. And he is here. He is here. The Spirit of God is with you. He is with me. He is in you. He is in me. It is time to manifest that power. The power of God is upon you. Is upon me. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. In Jesus' mighty name, we have received the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, we have received the power of God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have received the power for witness and be like Christ here on earth. As long as Jesus tarries in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have received the power to fulfill all of God's purpose for our life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. In Acts chapter 1, verse 1, he said, The former account I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach, both to do and to teach. So, what did Jesus do and teach? Amen. Matthew chapter 16, verse 17, 18, and 19. It says, and these signs will follow those who believe in my name. They will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Look at Matthew chapter 10, verse 8. Matthew 10, 8, what does it say? It says, and as you go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely be. Acts chapter 10, verse 38, that we read, what did it say? How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. What did what? Who went about doing good. And healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. Every sickness of oppression of the devil in your life, in the name of Jesus, by the Spirit power that is upon me and upon all these children of God, I cast you out in the name of Jesus. I cast out anyone that is oppressed. Receive your deliverance now in the name of Jesus. Anyone that is sick, receive your healing now in the name of Jesus. And I want every one of us to do it together because you have received the power. Amen. Raise your voices and cry with me and say, in the name of Jesus. Whoever is sick that is connected upon this platform now or will listen to this video, Receive your healing now in the name of Jesus by the power of God that is upon me, that is upon us in the name of Jesus. We command you be healed. Receive your healing in the name of Jesus. Be healed now in the name of Jesus. I said, be delivered now by the be delivered now from the power of darkness, from the power of Satan. In the name of Jesus, go ahead and go ahead and pray. Go ahead and declare it. Go ahead, be delivered from the power of Satan, every power of demon, every power of the devil oppressing your life, causing sickness in your body, causing oppression of any form in your life. Be delivered now.
be safe now and healed now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, our God. Thank you, our Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. He said, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. Who went about doing good? Oh, what good do you need in your life now? It is time by the power of God for the Spirit of God to all shout that good into your life. Let's lift up your voices and say, Father, the power to fulfill your purpose for my life and to meet every need in my life, release it unto me now. Release it unto me now in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, the power to fulfill your purpose and every need in my life. Whatever is the need in my life, by your power, by your spirit, oh God, fulfill all my needs. Meet all my needs. Meet all the needs of my brothers and sisters. Meet all our needs in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Now I want you to take two minutes and pray for yourself. You have heard. We've gone from salvation to the baptism of the Holy Spirit to healing and deliverance and to the power to fulfill all purpose and our needs. Now go ahead and pray. Whatever else you desire, ask God. More importantly, the clarity of his calling, his purpose, his will, for your life. What are you going to do when you live here now with this power that has soaked you, that has soaked us? Let the Holy Spirit give you understanding. Let the Holy Spirit give you guidance. We can continue to pray. 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 Pray for yourself. Pray for your family. Because we're also going to pray. Acts chapter 2 says, He will pour His Spirit upon all flesh. That's why we keep praying that prayer. I see the spirit of God poured out upon nations, poured out at this time upon nations in the name of Jesus. Pray for yourself. Pray for yourself. Pray for yourself. This is the day of impartation. Mark this day, for there shall be a turning around in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus, the spirit power will drive you. The spirit power will drive your life. Your life is complete by the spirit of God. There is no separate you here, separate you in the house, separate you at work. The spirit must enable you and empower you and drive your life. And there must be achievement, clear achievement in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus, pray. Pray, pray for yourself. As we are about to connect together and round off now. Oh, thank you, awesome God. Thank you, awesome God. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Anywhere you are connected, if you have not received the evidence that the Holy Spirit has filled you, and you speak in tongues, whether after that you continue to speak or you don't speak again, you know, you know, you know that the Holy Spirit is in you, is in you. Like Peter said, such as I have, he knew he had something. You must know you have something. Though I encourage you not to limit the Spirit by speaking in tongues. Be free, let the Spirit take over. But if you have not had any evidence that you have received the Holy Spirit right now, wherever you are connecting, just raise your two hands to heaven. The Holy Spirit is going to baptize you, going to fill you right now, and there will be manifestation in the name of Jesus. Raise your two hands as I pray. Everyone, every one of us, let's connect, let's connect. Even if you've been baptized before, you, re, you need refreshing. You need fresh fire. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for you have given your Holy Spirit. It has been fulfilled. Your promise has been fulfilled. 
according to your unfailing word and plan for mankind. And now in the name of Jesus, we ask, pour out your spirit upon everyone right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, that everyone connected upon this platform receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit of God, in the name of Jesus, let there be evidence right now. Let the manifestation of the, 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 the grace, the gift of speaking in tongues, the power to speak in tongues, show forth in the life of everyone that is connected upon this platform right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, receive him the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, receive him the power of God. In the mighty name of Jesus, receive him the enablement of the Spirit of God. In the mighty name of Jesus, now we're going to speak in tongues by the enablement of the Holy Spirit, by the power of the Spirit of God. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. The Holy Spirit came upon them like fire. And that fire will burn in you. In the mighty name of Jesus. That fire, that power. As John the Baptist testified of Jesus Christ, he, shall, he said he shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. That fire, that power will drive your life. Whatever has been a limitation in your life is hereby destroyed by the power of the Spirit of God. In the mighty name of Jesus, by the Spirit quickening. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8, verse 11, if the Spirit of him that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he that raised Christ from the dead is able to quicken your mortal body is able to give life to your mortal body. Let that Holy Spirit quicken you. Give life to your mortal body. Give life to your body, soul, and spirit. And drive your life to achieve the purpose of God, the greatness of God, for your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Henceforth, no more weakness. No more shyness. Receive the boldness that the Spirit of God gives to be a witness and to do and to teach like Jesus Christ, whose spirit, the spirit of the Son of God, God has given to you, given to me, given to us to live and fulfill all of God's purpose for our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, by that spirit grace, Receive the power to grow to the fullness of Christ for your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. And now we agree. Whatever you have desired and have asked of God, receive it now. Receive it now. Receive it now. In the mighty name of Jesus. And beyond your own prayer, let the Holy Spirit intercede for you. Let Jesus Christ, our intercessor at the right hand of the Father, intercede for us, intercede for you, intercede for me, that all of God's plan and purpose for your life, you will fulfill in the mighty name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, pour out your spirit now upon all flesh, upon the nations of the earth, and let your kingdom be established. And let your will be done. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, our God. We return all glory to you, almighty God. And your holy son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior. Our master, our king. To you, our father, be all glory. Be all honor. For what you have done today in our lives and throughout the earth, to you, O God, be all glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. God bless you, brothers and sisters. Now, stir up continually, put to use the gift 
of the Holy Spirit that has come upon you. And may you fulfill God's destiny for your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you. Receive all glory. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Glory be to God. Yes, Brother Sonny, please go ahead. Yes, uh, I want to thank God for what God did for me during the last uh, communion service that we had. Uh, for the past uh, few months, I've always been feeling very weak, most especially early hours of the morning. I was very weak. Even on that Wednesday, as I was going out to get the materials for the communion, I felt so tired and very, very weak. But during the prayer session and after we might have prayed and I took the communion and uh, I think uh, something happened to my life. I'm always afraid, you know, of the morning. When I sleep in the night, when I wake up, I always think of how I'm going to do in the morning because of the, the weakness I normally feel in the early hours of the morning. But since that went in the up to today, even throughout yesterday, I was walking throughout my, in the village and up to now, I've not gotten that experience again. So I want to return all glory to God for that healing in my life. Thank you very much, Pastor. Thank you. Glory be to God in the name of Jesus. And we join our voices and our faith together and we seal that deliverance that Jesus has given you, God has given you through his son, Jesus Christ. Every oppression of the devil in your life is destroyed forever. In the mighty name of Jesus, let the light of God, the power of God shine forth in your life. You shall fulfill all of God's will and purpose for your life. In the mighty name of Jesus, let us not play with the devil's uh, manipulation. The Bible is clear. Jesus was the one who said it. He said the thief comes not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Well, I, I told you, I said, I asked God, I said, with all the power you have given to us, why can't we just do anything we like with the power? He said, why I want you to focus on healing the sick and casting out the devil is because I have provided everything man needs. But the devil wants to destroy people's life. I want people to live and fulfill their time so they will come to serve me. And so I give you power to heal the sick, to cast out devil. If you can face these two and take them out and teach them my word, then man will come willingly to me and serve me. Do you understand? And so in the name of Jesus, every oppression of the devil in any life that is connected here right now, right now, in the name of Jesus, we terminate that oppression. I terminate that oppression. We cast out that devil. We cast out that demon. In the name of Jesus, we take authority over you and we say cease to function. Cease to operate in that life, in that family, in that man, in that woman, in that boy, in that girl. In that house, in, in that child, every oppression of the devil, we cast you out, we terminate you in the mighty name of Jesus. How yes. God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power, who went about doing good, healing all those who were oppressed of the devil. God was with him. Every oppression of the devil in whatever way it manifests in your life and in your family, whether in sickness, whether in hardship, whether in poverty, in the name of Jesus, I command your oppression of the devil be terminated now. In the name of Jesus, be destroyed now. In the name of Jesus, and I decree and declare that the light of the Spirit of God the power and the blessing of God for your life manifest now. Shine forth now in the name of Jesus. You shall shine forth by the spirit, power, and grace that is upon your life. By reason of this gathering together, by reason of this, my, my, uh, uh, 
sanctuary of the spirit of God upon his body, upon his children. In the mighty name of Jesus. Receive the grace to shine. In the mighty name of Jesus. So the spirit of God in you must achieve something. Something. You heard Paul say, the kingdom of God is not in word. Mm -mm. It's not talk, talk. It is in the power, the manifestation. So the spirit you have received, you must put it to use. Paul said, I labor more than they all. You must walk with the spirit that is in you. As I've said, there is no more separate you in church, in house, in business, in office, anywhere. You remain a son of God, a daughter of God, filled with the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit's power is in you, is in me. You must be bold to say like Peter, I have something. Don't say, I don't know what I have. You have something. Do you have something? What do I hear you say? Yes. In the name of Jesus. I have something. In Jesus' name. And we thank you, Brother Sonny, for sharing that testimony. And all glory be to God. Let's take another one before we close. Sister Comfort, you know, I won't let you go. Because you're always such an encouragement. Hallelujah. <laughs> My dears, good afternoon, the family of God. You know, I will not stop thanking God for his blessings upon my family, my children, and everybody. Amen. And Lord. yeah, and each day, each moment that I am with you and I feel the People are getting the understanding, like uh, you said, Moses said, he wished everyone were, were prophets. Yes, of God, filled with the spirit of God. Filled with the spirit of God. I was, like I said, I, I was always asking mm -hmm. God, how I wish everyone will have this blessing of the Holy Spirit. The blessing of understanding that the Holy Spirit is for all the children of God, is free for all the children of God. So every moment that we are getting that understanding, I am always so over joy. And I keep on praying, like you have said, the Holy Spirit will take control of this platform of whatever is being done here Amen. and we trust god that the full manifestation of the holy spirit will be experienced by every member of this group Hallelujah. and beyond amen so that is my joy that is my prayer and i am sure my faith God will not let me down. He is Amen. too faithful. Amen. Thank you. He Thank too you. Too faithful to disappoint us. Amen. So Thank you. He will hear us. He will answer us. Amen. Thank Amen. You. Yeah. God Thank bless you. you. Yes, God indeed. Bless you. So that was Numbers chapter eleven, verse twenty-nine. Numbers eleven twenty-nine that I mentioned earlier. Then Moses said to him, "Are you zealous for my sake? Oh, that all the Lord's people were prophets." And that the Lord will put his spirit upon them. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory Amen. to God. Amen. And Jesus came and fulfilled that desire. That was a desire that Moses was expressing. He, his own was a desire. But Jesus came and fulfilled it and said, as we read in John chapter 16, you remember? Look at it again if you want. He said, when I go. You know, he is a son, and he was with the father. He came from there. He spoke confidently. He says, but now I go away to him. I'm reading John 16, verse 5. 
But now I go away to him who sent me, and none of you ask me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Seven. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper, the Holy Spirit will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. Hallelujah. And he has been sent. We have something. Amen. It's time to share the grief. Have you received something? Tell him, Heavenly Father, thank you. I have received something. I have received the Spirit's grace, the power of God. Thank you, Almighty God. Let that power drive my life manifest in me everywhere I go till the end of my day here on earth. From today, I will achieve great things by the Spirit grace to glorify God. I will ex do exploit, do marvelous things in the name of Jesus. Let's share the grace now. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you. And bye-bye.